Hey guys, welcome back. We're going to build a medical prognosis model from this data set on Kaggle. Okay guys, you're going to download both of these, but we're going to join them together. This is for diabetic ret retopanathy. Okay. Okay, create your execution rule. Name your bucket whatever you want. A equals X data. Here's the X data, right? Merge equals DF, which is the other one, on unnamed. And then we're going to drop unnamed anyways. There's Y, our target. As you can see, there's a little bit of a class imbalance, huh? Merged is them together, but of course. And merged to CSV. We're going to do merged to CSV later so that we can do our model monitoring. Okay? And DF1 equals unnamed. Now DF1 info. DF1 head. DF1 shape. And here's why we need to do a hyperparameter tuning. Even after we deploy. We're going to deploy from two endpoints, and I'm going to show you the big difference. Okay, fill in a label encoder. Train and test data, split them. Train data, test data. Why, 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 why? Okay, XGBoost latest for your container. And do all these parameters. It's not going to matter anyways because you're going to have to hypertune the parameters because of a class imbalance. As you can see, during the training, this is terrible. 76% error. I mean, 24% error. It don't matter what you do with the... Okay, we're going to deploy this anyways. Do that data capture configuration. We're going to deploy two, actually. XG boost, deploy, data capture configuration, same as last time. And then we're going to do a hyperparameter now that we... Uh, tuning job. Binary logistic, num round 10, 0 0.3, 1.4. This metric is very important as well as this, binary logistic. Although, guys, I'm going to show you why it could have done even better if you did five training jobs, depending on your account, and you use linear instead of this method. It depends on the data set. You might want to use a linear, and then it'll be even higher, but you'll look at the difference between the deployment scores. Okay, do your hyperparameter tuning. My, my account for this account only lets me do three at a time, so if I did five, it would have done better. Although, you're going to see why linear tuner would have been better. The linear method. Instead of logarithmic. Logarithmic. Okay, do all these right here. Tuner log. Okay. It's completed. Attach it to your model. Remember, you find it in your hyperparameter tuning jobs. You attach your best save model here, it'll tell you, when you go into your console. And then predictor equals XGBoost deploy, data capture configuration still. Now we're going to uh, we're gonna predict the first, the first one with the same data. Okay, and as you'll see, the first one did pretty bad. Predictions one. Look at this. 51% ac overall accuracy rate, right? Okay, so with our second one in there, because remember there's two endpoints, guys. Let me show you. Because you just deployed two. I'm going to show you why. Okay. Oh, and also your hyperparameter tuning jobs. Go to training, hyperparameter tuning jobs, and pick your best one. Okay. 
Now this one went up to 75%. Remember, I could only do three training jobs, so it only did the best one, right? So if I did five, maybe it would have gone to 80% 80, 80 overall uh, classification rate. But let's say I did a linear tuning job instead of logarithmic. It would have done even better. It probably would have been 90 versus uh, two more training jobs. The best one might have done an 80% overall classification rate. But guys, you see the big difference between a hyperparameter tuning job? 51, nearly 76%. Okay, now we're going to invoke an endpoint from the second one. Uh, go ahead and round that, and basically that's uh, one, which is a definitely that guy is. Okay, and then remember your baseline data set from the one we did earlier. Here's your processing job for the model monitor. Okay. Now, guys, remember, do a linear tuning job. You can do both with XGBoost. It's better for this data set. Okay. Here's your constraints. I already did the execution. Watch, guys. Okay. As you can see, it was completed with one violation. An extra column. That was it. An extra column. That was it. And I did that on purpose, guys. Remember over here? The model monitor. Remember how we dropped unnamed? But I used merged instead of DF1 to CSV. And guys, remember you use CSV uh, always. Otherwise, it'll just merge it into one lump sum. Always do CSV. So, guys, oh, and one more thing. Here's how you do your hyperparameter tuning jobs, your best one. Okay. Completed and best training job. Now, guys, that's why you probably would want to do a linear one for this one and do five training jobs so it will uh, has a better chance of getting even better. Depending on your account, if not, you'll probably have to do three on this account I got. Okay, guys, and as you can see, the model monitor is pretty good at detecting anything. your processing job went from all the way to 24 percent error and remember do linear one instead of logarithmic okay that's all now guys next time we're going to get back to convolutional neural networks then we're going to deploy in SageMaker again after that maybe Eventually, I'm going to have to get to IBM Watson Studio. Thank you.